Well, now we want to talk about the power sector again. And this morning we have the managing director of CCS Technologies, Mr. Otho Usiagu, uh, with us again. Thank you very much for joining us. As well as the president, National Union of Electricity Employees, NUEE, Mr. Joe Jero. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, us. General Secretary. Well, it's, uh, it's cheering that you're here again. Yeah. I remember the last time we really didn't finish some of the issues that we were raising. And at, lo at that time, we were talking about you know, the, the major you know, subdivisions of the power sector, the transmission companies, the generation companies, and the discos at the time that they were asking for some form of um, bailouts of sorts. Um, you, would, you weren't really able to <laughs> complete some of your thoughts at the yes. time. Perhaps it's a good place for us to start now. Especially because between then and now, there has been a major, uh, you know, shutdown, so to speak, of failure, of power failure <coughs> with the TCN and a number of other things. Because Ikeja Electric put out the information at the time that in the middle of the night, you know, there were some, uh, some things that happened that shut power you know, largely all across, almost all across the nation. Um, is there any form of justification now? Well, I thank you so much for having me. Uh, the electricity issue has become recurrent. And um, until we decide, we as a people, especially government, until we decide to take the bull by the horn, this problem will continuously be there. For the past 14 years, we've been on this. And it's just like uh, one step forward, about three steps backward. The Electricity Reform Act of 2005, the idea initially was that things will work after some years, but where we are now is very clear. Was it a good plan? It was a good plan. It was a good plan, but along the line, I think we, we had issues with the implementation. The implementation in the sense that government decided to still hold on. And in a business where government is playing a very, very pivotal part, it's always very, very difficult you know, for that business to work well. Okay. That's why we are where we are. Well, you know, there's a peculiarity with power. Because power is not just any business. It's essential business. It's something that people cannot do without. I, I want to imagine that the gov government has good intention. It's not just like they want to hold on to it. So don't you think, thinking in that line, power is essential? I mean, they have to perhaps subsidize for people because you can't just jump from paying low tariffs all of a sudden paying high tariffs. So don't you think the government is justified for still staying in the sector, having some presence in the sector? It is not sustainable. That is where we are getting it wrong. It's not going to be sustainable. Now we are talking about bailout of about uh, 1.2 trillion. So even if that bailout is given, in the next one or two years, you'll still be talking about bailout because there are laws of dislocation in the entire chain. So the way, the way there's no utility that is cheap. Electricity is not cheap all over the world. If you generate electricity in your homes, and you know what it costs you. Currently, market price is about 57 to 58 naira per kilowatt hour. And now the discos are charging within 20 to about 30 uh, naira per kilowatt hour. So this top gap, this difference, who's going to take care of it? And government is having issues with so many other sectors crying for funding. So government cannot continuously hold back if we are really, really sh ready to deliver electricity to our homes. Government I, can't pay for it. I can see that uh, Mr. Jero has been smiling all the while as you were making those comments. He okay. said it's not sustainable for government to continually hold on to the 40% of the discos and a number of other places <coughs> in the power sector. What's your take? Well, I think uh, the best thing is for government to take on 100% hold on electricity, very clear. And I made it clear when they were about privatizing. Uh, the issue of privatizing to the a parasitic private sector, you know, that doesn't have the resources to manage the sector 
is the greatest problem we're having. And I say this because I've not seen any of the so-called investors that has the capacity to build even one power plant. This is six years down the line. There is no power plant that has been constructed. And Nigeria will be going down, down, down. They are just living on what government handed over to them as of today. So if you are talking of sustainability, it is the privatization process that is not sustainable. Before now, they have been given over a trillion before today. And they privatized the sector at about 400 and something billion. Now you sold your house at 400 and something billion. And you are giving the person, you have given him over 1 trillion, probably to paint it you know, and uh, do tiling. It's not, it's not sustainable. That's the sustainability we are talking about. And now at what return on investment will a private sector man build a power plant and run it? And I'm saying that a power plant will take you minimum of three, four years to, to be constructed. And you can't recoup your investment for 20, almost 20 years. So which Nigerian investor you know, will go into this venture when they are investing today to recoup tomorrow? And the whole argument they are talking about government handing off is not, there is not backed up by any evidence. I'm not aware of any country Maybe. where the private sector built the power sector. I'm not aware of any country. But when you achieve, you know, stability in the sector, the issue of who manages it or who co collects the, the tariff is a different thing entirely. And that commodity that is not available cannot be affordable. You know, Mr. Ajero, if you say that you believe that government should have 100% hold Excellent. on the power sector, are you implying that we revert to the status quo? Because we know what power was like then, and it was all government. So aren't we just sliding back into the past? Well, let me tell you what power was. In 2002, Lili Moke, Chairman uh, uh, Technical Committee on Power, brought our power generation to 4,000 megawatts. And I want you to give me evidence that it has moved beyond 4,000 megawatts between that time and now. No new power station constructed then, but he did a maintenance work on the existing power plants. Between that time, other power stations were constructed by the uh, Basanjo government. Geregu, Omotosho, Papalanto, all these other ones. I have issues with them, but they, that government tried to construct some power plants. In addition to the 4,000 megawatts that was in existence and handed over to the, 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 the private sector. And then we are going down on daily basis. Let me say this. You must match demand with supply. Nigerians are having demand on daily basis. And supply is constant at probably 4,000 megawatts. It then means we are going down. If you want 10 hours supply a day, as the demand is going up, you'll be going to six hours, three hours. So, and somebody is telling you that unless you hand over to the power sector, and they are holding us to ransom today. You know, just before we get Mr. Osiago to respond to some of the issues you have raised, are you implying that there's been no improvement, there's been no growth in the power <laughs> sector? I mean, none whatsoever ever since the privatization process up till now. The, the growth has been that of increase in tariff. The increase in tariff has happened three times which they couldn't have given the uh, Nepad hen. The so-called, uh, uh, what do you call it, grant or whatever, over one trillion, they couldn't have given it to the, the government-owned company, the, uh, the uh, Nepad hen. None of such. Nepad was not even allowed as a public utility to charge beyond certain tariff. But we are seeing all that and there's still demand for more. How can Nigerians, even at the cost they are talking of now, how can Nigerians pay almost 15 naira per kilowatt hour? How? So the issue, even the Power Sector Reform Act that we are talking about, wasn't our document. It was, ILO, sorry, it was IMF and World Bank document that was given to other countries. If you compare it side by side with the Lesotho electricity reform, you see that you change where you see Lesotho, you change Nigeria. So we can't claim to be a, the authors of that document that was foisted on us. But do you, can we, just before we take yeah. on Mr. Osiago for this response, there have been comparison mm. between the old NITEL and old NEPA. Mm. Old NITEL pretty much, you know, got completely privatized and... NITEL was never privatized up to today. Okay, well, that's the opinion that you have. No, no, I'm that's you. not what some other and people believe. The moment... well, just one moment. The communication sector, long and short, was completely deregulated and privatized. 
that's happening now. Everyone can use, we can reach you on phone much easier. Th that's now. what I wanted to correct. That's what some of, many, many people say, that if we at least attempted something like that in the power sector, maybe it would help. Yeah, you see, uh, I subscribe to that. But I, I want to correct the impression that NITEL was privatized. NITEL was destroyed for the GM, GSM companies to operate. And I say this because NITEL was posting profit annually before they came with the policy of transferring it to all those companies they were mentioning. And now what we are seeing is technology, the GSM technology that swept around the whole world, whether in Ghana, whether in Togo, whether anywhere. It wasn't any ingenuity in Nigeria uh, telecom sector. I'm saying this that by the time GSM came, everybody all over the world, that was what you saw. The NITEL as of today was not private. And if NITEL is to be in existence, why not say they destroyed it? There will be competition between the NITEL you know and this so-called GSM. Of course, before then, the tariff of NITEL GSM was cheaper. So you're implying that government should be in competition with, yeah, with, with the business? Yeah, that's, that's the, so that there will be a choice. Okay. okay, so let's bring in Mr. Sorry, sorry. now. He has raised a lot of issues. Yeah, and, and I see that all through you are, <laughs> you are trying to bottle it in. So let, let's just allow you to express yourself in response to what he has raised. Well, I want to agree with Joe that um, there has not been improvement in terms of power availability to Nigerians, but the reasons are, they are not far-fetched. You see, you, you cannot be talking about investors coming into this space, in this power space, because so many things are not right. Number one, the rates at which we are paying currently electricity is not what any investor can look at and come in, because it's highly subsidized. Now, the rate at which we are equally selling gas is also subsidized. So, government cannot continuously, as I said, hold him back with this key utility. And for government to run it, the funds are not there. So what government needs to do is to sell completely their equity in discos, stop this issue of huge subsidy in the rate at which electricity is being sold to consumers. You may argue that yes, oh, Nigerians cannot pay, but Nigerians currently are generating electricity in their homes and they're buying diesel, they're buying uh, petrol to run their generators. It will only take about a year or so. The power of competition will pull these prices down. We are all living witnesses to what happened in the telecom sector. You see, business is business. We should allow business to run like business. If he said that government should revert to 100% ownership, if that happens, and you said government should hands off 100%, if that were to happen, what would happen? What would see, be the consequence? This is, this is the same flip-flop, you know, that has not done any good to us. What government need to do, as I said, is to, you, you cannot take back, don't forget, the Electricity Reform Act of 2005 is already a law, okay, except you want to go back and start repealing that which is, act. Which is perhaps an, an allusion, well, maybe uh, not, what not, not, not a repeal, to but the what the Senate all... President said, has said, is look, let's declare a vote of uh, is a state of emergency, let's, let's tackle this power sector thing head on so that we can have development. Uh, if you would agree with him, what would be the you know, expedited actions that you would No, do, Don't forget that even before the advent of the arts, we, we had the PS, I mean the NEPA, we had the PSCN. We are living witnesses to all the ineptitude and all the issues we had. That necessitated this change. I agree that we've not done it properly. What we have done with that act is a right step, but we need to tinker with it a little bit by telling government to divest completely and open the space. Let the price of electricity float in the market. Then you have investors who will come in here and build power stations, run the discos, even transmission of Nigeria. But Mr. Jerry said so far. Company of Nigeria, I don't even know. <laughs> Why government is still holding on? Yes, some of them will say, oh, because of uh, 
security concerns or what have you. Okay. A quick one. Right. Uh, you know, government still maintains 40%, but government sold 60% to the investors and handed over 100% to them. Government's 40%, at no point, have one couple been declared as profit to government in the past six years. So it's like you, you say you sold 60% to somebody and you gave him everything. And but, the, but government still puts a cap on certain things. No, the so cap they are putting is that you, nobody will charge you a tariff. Mm. That's a cap. Maximization of profit is not allowed. In, there's regulation in any sector. And I'm saying this, even the price of fuel, the price of kerosene, there must be a... The person selling can't say, I will sell this in one million. But just you also said now that government is spending money even after privatization. That's the point I'm making. That government, <clears throat> rather than spending the money after giving it to the private sector, it's good they run it. Let, let, me, let, me, let me try to understand this, Mr. Ajero. So if government takes over 100%, what you're proposing, Obviously, government will still be subsidizing it because they will not want to charge the tariffs at, you know, the commensurate rate, right? That means government will not be making profit. So, is that sustainable? I'm well, just well you invest on two issues. You have to look at social service and profit. If by that, government is providing social services to the people, then they have done something. I'm, I'm repeating this because I know that government before now, you know, at least they were providing electricity at this same 4,000 megawatts. And it wasn't sustainable. At, the, at this 4,000 megawatts, I'm, I'm coming. And at a cheaper rate, I want you to look at the series of tariff increases. And the problem we're having now is that they're saying, no, we want to increase more. And that's what they're, say, they're calling cap. Besides, government had given them even everything, the 100% of the sector. Government gave them everything yeah. and is holding a rope. Is that no, no, there is no sector that you say go and charge whatever you want. That's what they are looking for. But you, 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 you mentioned, <laughs> pardon me, you mentioned petroleum, petrol. Yeah, yeah, actually, I, should, yeah. I should be clear. The and price is still fixed. Subsidy, fixed by but government. you know that there's been a lot of controversy mm. about subsidy. In fact, people are saying scrap it entirely. The government has said it several times mm. that this is is not sustainable. We can't keep putting one one billion dollars yes, into yes. subsidy every year and expect that yes. we'll get anything from yes. it. So if you relate this to the petroleum sector, it's not sustainable. So obviously, it's not sustainable mm -hmm. for electric. Let, so, let me tell you this. Even government has been, is, if you know the role of NMPC, till tomorrow. If you know the role of NMPC stations nationwide, you know that government is playing a role to mitigate whatever that is happening. And even if you remove subsidy, deregulate the place, privatize the place, there is still going to be competition between the NMPC station. If you watch today, you know you can drive into NMPC station and buy for it <coughs> at a price. You can drive into the private, you know, owned stations and buy for it. So there is no, no, that, that's different for the for the you petroleum any, sector. Yes, it's something you get from the ground. You mm. you 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 mine it as it were, and you sell it. But yeah. electric, you generate it, so you actually have to invest. You get more. it from where? Pretty much, you have to invest more. It's not something you sell and make profit of. If you understand what I'm saying, so there are different sectors entirely. No, 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 no. no. You see, even the electricity sector is generated through sources, either the gas or water, hydro. You know, the same way you, you, you generate, sorry, you, you refine, a, 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 sorry, petroleum products. But the major problem we have with petroleum products is that government has to take crude out of the country. And then after taking it out of the country, they will refine there. No, they make money off it. No, no, they lose money. Well, we, we get enough revenue at least. They lose and, money. And that's what we because, actually because used to Because it is, it is not no, a sound Jairo, economy. That's what we used to fund it's not a, our budget. No, it's not a sound it, economy. Mr. Jairo, you that understand you, what I'm saying. It's, not a, sound, it's not a sound economy that you produce gari, sorry, uh, cassava in your house and you take it out to somebody to refine to Gary no, that's and, a, no, and that's buys it back. conversation. I'm just saying we make revenue from that. So how? if you are relating that to the power sector, how much revenue will government make? Oh, you from have been the selling to Togo, uh, Kotonu, Niger Republic. hundred million dollars. Up to this moment. That's a hundred million dollars. Why? When you don't have GCN. enough. That's why do, not compared to. Why do you say when you don't have enough? Why? So uh, even primitive economy shows that when you produce something in your house, you take the one you are going to eat enough before you sell. What's 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 the issue with that one? I think Mr. Siago wants to. Yeah, you, you you can see what's been happening in the educational sector. Look at our hospitals. It's very clear that government.
cannot handle all this. It's very clear. I'm sure uh, my friend, Mr. Jero, here now, most of his kids are not in public school. Because, you see, we, we must draw a line that what, has, what, what happened 20 years, 30 years ago, compared to the realities on ground, it's very clear that government cannot continuously handle utilities and provide it because they just want to make sure the citizen is about. Mm. It's not going to work. It's not working anymore. And the more government continuously put their hands in this subsector, I can assure you, we will continue to move within the same cycle. Because my friend is coming from the labor angle. And I appreciate, I understand what he's trying to say. But look at it, look at it. For, for more than 25 years, we've been in the same quagmire because government wants to hold this uh, uh, electricity subsector. Time has come that they need to answer. If they don't, get the right price of electricity, get the right price of gas, then you see massive inflow. But he, he mentioned of investors. something fundamental. He said so far, uh, none of the investors in court have been able to build a power plant. So if if at this rate they're not showing so much, what if if you give them to, if you give it to them 100 percent? What's what's the assurance that they will maximize it? Apart from Dangote, look at look 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 at the petroleum sector. Which other investors are building refinery? It's because government is holding on to the price. So if, if government takes but, off... But someone still built eventually. Of course, because of course, it's going to be a lot of concession later. It's going to be concession in terms of price of crude to this refinery. I have issues with this so, issue. So that is why, that is why nobody is coming into the sector. Because government is holding down on price of electricity. Mr. Jerry wants... Yeah, I have, this, I have issue with this uh, idea of competent private sector that is trying to portray. And, and, I, and I, I want to look at that private sector that is competent. Because government came up with the impression that government has no business in business. And they started handing over government-owned properties to friends of government. And the, like the power sector we are talking of now, we can look at creating 18 companies, around 4,000 megawatts, 18 companies. You say, this is uh, Keja, Eko, uh, Enugu. Does that bring more power if you split NEPA into 18 companies and then you increase tariff around the same 4,000 megawatts? So if you had deregulated it, and there were about 25 licenses given to Nigerians to come and build, compete. Now they said no. The same NEPA that was inefficient, incompetent, was what was split into 18 places and given to friends of government. Now, Mr. Ejero, we'll take this further, you know, a little bit, you know, when we come back from the break, because there are some angles to this conversation that I think uh, maybe it's just, you know, your own position. But we'll, we'll explore it further when we come back from this break. So please stay with us. We're still talking about the power sector here. And let me very quickly go back to you, Mr. Osiago. One of the issues that a number of people, well, perhaps the people in the power sector have raised, is that of infrastructure. So there is the transmission companies, there's the generation companies, there's the uh, distribution companies. Uh, many have raised the issue of infrastructure deficit in the power sector. But investors knew all of these. They did due diligence, I would assume, that these you know, infrastructural shortfalls were there, yet they still went along and um, got the contracts, signed the dotted lines anyway. So there shouldn't be any excuse for not delivery. They, they, were, they were errors in the privatization, so to say. I'll just give you a very simple example. You sold the discos, retained 40%. Then you, you had the regulator. Then you also had the embed to buy power on behalf of the discos, okay? So that is another wholly owned government parasita. To buy power from the Jenkos, then sell to the discos. What have you done with that? What you've done is to make the discos lazy. You make them lazy because you are there providing a stopgap for them. 
So money moves from one end but to the, the other. The, the, the embed, so there should the embed, have been. Forgive me, forgive me. The embed um, angle didn't come in until a little later, right? Yes. And it was because at some point the discos were not doing whatever we're it was paid. that they needed to do at any particular time. Consequently, somebody need, well, government needed to do something. Because even as we speak, you know that it's difficult for discos to still remit as much as they were supposed to remit. So I go back to the issue of infrastructure. Those infrastructural deficits are some of the reasons that the discos and the trancos are saying that they cannot give us power as and when. That is the same problem I'm talking about. They are not paying. Are they still paying to today? What is the collection rate? Remittances is still within 28% across board. I'm talking about discos remitting to embed, you know, for the what they have consumed from the Jenkos. It's still about 28%. Because government is still involved. <laughs> if this is a private sector, if I sell to you and you are not paying, you can be rest assured that I'm going to cut you off. But because the government is still coming into the system, into the supply chain, as a godfather, OK? Oh, they can't they can remit up to 28%. Oh, so what government happened? fills in the gap. That is why this issue of bailout or the differences in terms of cost is coming up. So, but if government is not playing in the sector, and it's just private sector, private sector, I bet you the discos will pay for the electricity they have, you know. And if taken. they don't pay, what happens? If they don't pay, it's just like if you don't pay for electricity, what happens? Exactly. If you, if you have, which if, is why if you are made Forgive that, me, forgive me. Which is why government is perhaps playing in the sector, just in case it's there's going to be a power, you know, there's going to be a problem. Government wants to step in and do the needful so that the nation, because ultimately, whenever there is a power outage, they, no one is talking about the discourse. They are talking about the federal government. That is where the problem is. If, if you, you don't... If, a no, no, that's where, where the problem problems. is. <laughs> that's if your telephone, you are unable to connect, or you've been charged arbitrarily, you don't go to government. You know where to lay your complaints. So that is why we are saying government should stop acting like a godfather. Is, is because they are there, that is why the dislocations are so much. Okay. Very you, good you see, if you take it from this aspect, you know that NCC is there, you know, as far as regulation in the uh, telecom sector is concerned. Now, the embed is there to check, you know, the, this lapse. Bef prior to now, you know, when we had Niger Dam Authority and Electricity Corporation of Nigeria, one was generating, the other one was selling. And after selling, you know, they will not pay. Now, that was why the embed came in there. You know, and there's enough money which the embed could pay on their behalf so that power will get to the people. Okay. Let's, let's uh, quickly go to Abuja. Malfoy has a question for you. Well, I, I think that Mr. Ajero was already addressing some of the questions that I wanted to quickly put to him. Um, I, I see the point he's trying to make um, about utility, how we consider electricity as a utility. Is it something that we want to make profit on, or is it something that we consider as a social service? Uh, there, there are huge questions that we haven't quite uh, addressed. However, what Nigerians are very certain of is that in many sectors that government has intervened, uh, there has been a lack of sincerity in terms of how those sectors have been managed or handled, and, and there's a lot left to be desired. And that's one of the reasons why people have advocated for either privatization, or as we had in the case of the telecommunications liberalization, to let the private sector come in. However, this is where we are right now with, electricity, with the electricity sector. There are huge questions uh, around the, uh, how the privatization process went, uh, which you have also raised. However, this is where we are. We have privatized, so to speak, and we know that, uh, as Kayode kept on pointing out, that embed intervention cannot be permanent. It cannot be continual. It cannot be something that will go on forever and ever. At the end of the day, we have to address what is going to happen to the power sector because we need to move on. Um, how do you see labor coming into this particular matter to help us move on in the power sector? Because sometimes labor is perceived to be the problem, one of the things that, keep, that keeps holding us back. How do you address that point? 
Well, I, I don't see where uh, labor has created a problem. Because if not for labor's intervention, at the point of even privatization, a lot of mistake would have been made for a long time. All that you are seeing now, we pointed them out. We came up with even world experiences on what happened in the power sector. And even had one-on-one -on -one with the then president, you know, Jonathan. And he said clearly that your points are valid, but this policy of privatization must go on. So it's like there is no reverse on it. Now, based on Labour's intervention, the, uh, the uh, Yaradua government said, wait a minute, let us you know, create some uh, enabling environment before we move on. Because at the pace we were going, if Yaradua had moved at that pace, by now we would have been, you know, there would be no electricity. Yaradua now said, let us have what we are selling. You don't sell nothing. You are privatizing and maybe you have 2,000 megawatts or whatever. The product is not available. Can we reinforce the system so that we have enough to sell? And with that three or two years, you know, intervention by Yaradua, you know, as a result of the prompting of labor to say, hey, you know, are we selling nothing? You can't sell the power sector and there's no megawatts. You know, so that was why we even got to the level of almost 4,000 megawatts. And so labor has been providing advice. You know, I have not seen where labor uh, created a problem. But then, when we work, we have to be paid. I think that's where the issue of labor uh, comes in. And then we have made efforts to even be players. The last, the, the last cell of uh, Afan Power Station, the, the union which I represent, Follow the whole bidding process. And we're among the two, you know, listed. And last minute, and it's important we get this, last minute, the BPE transferred the bidding, uh, the last bidding to Transcorp. And we protested. It didn't work out. And the owner of Transcorp won the bid, and we became the reserve bidders. So we have tried to see whether we can participate directly to show example it didn't work. You know, and we have advice. It's not working. So I don't see where the will be the problem. Some would even argue, Mr. Jero, some would even argue that, you know, with the posture that you have taken, you know, it, it, some could even say that because you don't even want, you want government to take uh, full control of the power sector, it could, some would even say that your members of your union, who are workers in all of these organizations, could be frustrating the process. So let me ask you directly, what kind of relationship do you have with the people who have employed your members, you know, the Jenkos, the Discos, and the Trancos? Well, the, the relationship was that of mutual suspicion initially. You know, mutual suspicion in the sense that while they were coming to take over, we said we have worked for government 10 years, 20 years, 30 years. They have to pay us what they who have worked. You, the private sector, you can't inherit, you know, the labor of another person which was clear argument. Because if you watch now, if they had uh, you know, inherited that liability, they wouldn't have moved on. So at that point, they thought we were troublemakers. But government started paying us our entitlement. And when they came, they chose whom they want to work with. You know, if you watch the level of SAC, and they brought their own people. You know, so, but the relationship is growing. If you watch all of the 11 distribution companies, 10 of them will have signed you know, a condition of service with them, and it's a mutual one, you know, over the years. Except Portaco, who have written the condition of service, who have not signed. But the major problem happened to be the generating stations. Because principally, our problem with them is still going to linger. You know, because of the fact of where they were located, the schools in such places were built by the unions for the workers. So when they came, they inherited the engines, and they said they are the owners of the schools. Just, just one more thing be before we go. Now, the Minister of Labor mentioned that the, the strike, which we're still recovering from a few weeks ago, was perhaps as a result of a power tussle between the senior staff and Nui. I'd like you to respond to that, because that has been making the rounds. Yeah, before the, even the uh, Speaker of the House of Rep, I told the Minister that I, do, I don't want to join issues with him. Or even if there is an inter or intra union crisis, which I didn't know, before now, it's his duty and responsibility to solve it. So I'm not aware of any a problem between, and I'm not aware that even the strike action was not complied with 100%. So there's no power tussle? Uh, no, no. Okay, well, uh, gentlemen, it's, uh, it's been cheering talking about this. And so 
uh, the jury is out there. I mean, you can also take your position wherever you are right now watching us. But we have to thank you very much, the President of the General uh, Secretary, General, General Secretary, Secretary mm -hmm. beg your pardon, of uh, National Union of Electricity Employees. Thank you so much, as thank well you. as uh, the Managing Director of CCS Technologies, Othosian. Thank you, gentlemen, for being a part of this conversation. Thank you so much. We're back in a moment. Please stay with us.